So today we're going to talk about factoring cubic binomials. And to start off with, we're going to look at a multiplication problem. We're going to multiply a plus b to a squared minus ab plus b squared. So we're going to set up our box. I'm going to put a plus b down one side and my second polynomial a squared minus ab plus b squared across another side. Let's hurry and multiply those together. So when I multiply them together and get my six terms, something a little bizarre happens. I get two sets of matching terms. Here's our first set, right? I have a squared b and I'm subtracting an a squared b. So what happens in that case? They cancel themselves right out of the picture. Our second set of matching terms, a b squared and negative a b squared, they're going to cancel each other out too. And all I'm left with are these two terms a to the third power and b to the third power also known as a cubed and b cubed. I end up with the sum of a cubed and b cubed. This is called a cubic binomial. Cubic because both terms are cubed or taken to the third power, right? And binomial because it only has two terms. This is also called the sum of cubes. A and B, whatever they might be, are both being cubed and added together. And it's important to notice, right, that A and B aren't cubed already, right? You have to cube them, then add them together to get the sum of cubes. I'll explain why that's important a little later. Let's take a look at another one. This is almost identical to what we just did. I just made a couple of sign changes. So when I set this up and multiply them together, again, I get a couple sets of matching terms, terms that are going to cancel. I have a squared b and I'm subtracting an a squared b, so they'll cancel, of course. And again, with ab squared and negative ab squared, they're going to cancel. Now I'm almost left with the same thing, just a little bit different, right? Like I said, I change some signs and I end up with what's called the difference of cubes this time. Again, a and b are objects that are being cubed and subtracted. Difference of cubes. So let's kind of reiterate what we just did, right? Factoring is the opposite of multiplication. So we just did the multiplication to show you how to get the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes. Factoring, we just have to go backwards. We can take a sum of cubes and I can change it back to the two polynomials that I used to get it. Same thing with difference of cubes. To factor this, I can simply change it back to the two polynomials that I multiplied together to give me a difference of cubes. Now factoring sum of cubes and difference of cubes, there's a whole complicated process as to how they got this. The best thing that I can give to you is to ask you to memorize this pattern. If you notice, they are almost identical, right? They, all, they both start with a, then b, then a squared, then a times b, then b squared. The only thing that's different, or that's different is a couple of signs, right? So when I have students usually that start to memorize these, they have a hard time at first remembering which signs go with which cubic binomial. Well, turns out that all you have to remember is soap. 
Yes, soap. Soap stands for same sign, opposite, always, positive. Let me show you why that works and how that's going to help you out here. Let's take a look at this sum of cubes again. Remember I started with addition. Well, in my two factors, I start with addition, right? the same sign. So I always start with the same sign as in my original binomial. The second sign over is always the opposite of what I started with, so I use the opposite sign. And the third sign is always positive. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Soap. Same thing with difference of cubes. I start out with subtraction. I start with the same sign, opposite sign, and the third sign is always positive. Other than that, the two patterns are absolutely identical and they're not very hard to memorize. Let's take a look at what that does with an example. This is a sum of cubes and I know it's not like really easy to see that that's a sum of cubes at first, we'll give you a list of perfect cubes a little later on so you can start to get more familiar with that. But if I can't tell that 27 is a perfect cube, I can always use the cube root function on my calculator. x to the third comes from cubing x, right? And 27 comes from cubing 3. So x to the third power and 3 to the third power. Remember how we said that a and b are what's being cubed and then added together? Well that means that a is just going to be the x and b is just going to be 3, right? x is being cubed, 3 is being cubed, and then they're being added together. So if I want to find a and b, I can take the cube root of each term in my sum of cubes. Once I know what a and b are, right, x and 3, I can take that x and the 3 and I can factor this sum of cubes really quickly and easily. Here's our pattern, right? If you know the pattern, it's easy to factor. To factor my sum of cubes, again, I'm going to take x and 3, right, because that's what was being cubed, and I'm going to start with just a, in other words, x, right? I'm going to start with a cubed root of my first term. So I'm going to start with x, and then I'm going to add it to the cubed root of my second term, which was just 3. In my second set of parentheses, my second factor, I'm going to square our x term. For my middle term, I need to multiply them together. So x times 3 just gives me 3x. And for my last term, I need to square my second cubic root, right? So I need to square the 3. And that's going to give me 9. And that is all it takes to factor the sum of cubes. Let's take a look at one more. So hopefully we can start to get this process in our heads. Remember to find a and b I have to take the cube root of both terms, right? If I break this down, the cube root of my first term has a 5 and an m in it. And the cubed root of 64 is just 4. So I'm going to use 5m and 4 in my factors. Now since this is a difference of squares, right, I need to pay attention to the fact that this is subtraction. Here's my pattern. So to factor my difference of, of cubes, sorry, difference of cubes, First of all, I'm going to take the first term, the first cube root. 
and that's just 5m. I'm going to subtract the second one, which is just 4, right? a minus b, 5m minus 4. In the second set of parentheses, I need to square 5m, 5 times 5, and m times m gives me 25m squared. For my middle term, I need to multiply them together. 5m times 4 is 20m. And for my last term, I need to square 4, which gives me 16. And then I'm done, right? I've factored the difference of cubes. I'm totally finished with my factoring responsibility. Just to make this a little easier for you, you need to start to get to know which numbers are perfect cubes. Here's a list um, from 1 to the third power to 12 to the third power. Pause the video and take a minute to write these down in your notes. All right, we're done for today. Make sure to write down any questions that you have so you don't forget to ask them in class. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.